Okay, I want to talk a little bit about uh, this chart that we have here. Uh, this is a bear shaft or broadhead point of impact tuning guide. Um, so essentially, if you're broadhead tuning or bear shaft tuning and you're shooting at uh, a fixed point on your target, your fletched arrows land here in the middle where you're intending to aim, and your broadhead or your bear shaft impact above, below, to the left or to the right, these are the, the solutions that you need to do in order to fix that, uh, in, in order to tune, tune your bow. If your bear shafts are impacting above the fletched arrows, you need to move your knocking point up or move your rest down. If your bear shaft or your broadhead is impacting below your fletched arrow, you need to move your knocking point down or move your rest up. If you're impacting to the left of your fletched arrows, you need to move your cam right or move your rest left. If you're impacting to the right with the bear shaft or the broadhead, you need to move your cam left or move your rest right. Okay, so Brody shot uh, two arrows with a full length arrow. Uh, we're hoping to get his arrow length down to uh, 29 and a half inches, at least uh, according to what he wants his velocity to be, his arrow weight um, on our uh, archer's advantage. Uh, full length shafts tore weak, uh, knock left for a right-handed shooter. Um, we uh, cut two inches off that arrow and brought that tear inside. We're tearing a, about a half inch. Uh, there's a little bit of a knock low tear and, and a little bit knock left. Uh, so we're gonna proceed with cutting that last half inch off, I think we're okay with, and seeing how it tears. Um, it's actually looking like, so at this point, we're probably gonna raise up, we're gonna raise up the D-loop, um, and we're gonna cut that that last, Brody was hoping to be at 29 and a half inches on his carbon to carbon arrow length. There's no reason not to cut that off. Um, and then we're also gonna make a, an adjustment to his D-loop, bringing it up to take care of this uh, knock low tear. We probably may not have to do much shimming on the cams, they came perfect. We may have to do a small rest adjustment, but we'll see how it looks with uh, cutting that last half inch of the arrow off to get to his finished arrow length of 29 and a half, and we'll see how that, that looks. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, we're, gonna, uh, we're starting to show a little bit of a knock low, uh, knock low tear. Um, so the, part of the reason why we didn't tie knock set points at this point is to, to take care of that. Um, so we're gonna actually rotate the D loop um, and kind of force it up uh, to get that, uh, that, knock, that knock low tear to go away. So knock low, raising the knocking point will get rid of a knock low tear. So I kind of just twist it. You're just following the uh, serving up. Yeah, I'm kind of just using the serving to help help uh, help twist it. I should have mentioned beforehand that uh, before we started filming this, I had previously marked, where's the Sharpie? I had uh, taken a Sharpie and marked where the D loop was before. Uh, so now I'm looking at that reference and it looks like we've raised it up, I don't know, 30 seconds of an inch. 30 seconds. So his D loop is now, I've raised his D loop up a 30 second of an inch. Um, that's Maybe not going to be, maybe not quite resolved that completely, but we'll just see where where this tears now. So have you shoot it again? Uh, we're going to cut that. We're going to cut that last half inch arrow off. I don't see any reason why we can't do that. And then we'll um, shoot it again. See if see yeah. see what it's looking see like. What it looks like. So we're still knock low. I didn't raise it. I didn't raise it up enough. Um, looks like we've almost completely gotten rid of the uh, knock left tear with the arrow length. Uh, it's not often that archer, archer's advantage will put you out exactly right. I think that was a matter of uh, luck here. Um, 
it's looking like we're probably not going to have to do any shim adjustment um, although we will show how to do that um, but it does we did resolve a little bit but we need to bring that knocking point up probably a sixteenth of an inch now and that'll probably probably get rid of that okay so just but um, uh, Brody just shot uh, again um, we uh, the knock he's gonna knock knock low tear um, before we just raise the D loop I just wanted to get everything in the in the level again um, use the 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 Hamsky third axis level to to level up the string to level up the bow in in this plane uh, uh, I hardly ever use one of these but um, it's a tool that's available so we'll show it. Um, just going to check to see the, uh, the arrow and we are showing that it's a, that this is, this is high compared to the knock with the, with the bow level. So yeah, that is telling me that the knocking point does need to come up a hair. So just wanted to double check that before we went and made that, that change. Okay. So Brody shot a few shots. Um, so uh, we just, uh, we leveled, we just wanted to put the bow back in the level, make sure that the arrow was good. Uh, we raised it about a sixteenth of an inch. Um, those were the two previous tears, and now that's his last tear. It's just ever so slightly a little knock low and a little knock left. Uh, still, the knock left, we're not going to cut the arrow any shorter. It's about as short as, as we feel comfortable. Um, so probably just have to do a, a slight rest adjustment. That is definitely not enough tear um, with the... Uh, with to, to make a shim adjustment so the bow right from the factory was was pretty good on shims uh, we still will show how to swap those shims um, just for information because they may not always come like that in my experience they do come pretty dang close um, yeah so from here i'll probably adjust the d loop one more time probably not even a 30 second of an inch up and we'll make a rest adjustment we're going to be uh, so this is a knock left tear so the rule of thumb to remember is for a knock left tear, regardless of left-handed or right-handed shooters, to resolve a knock left tear, you need to move the rest in the opposite direction. So knock left, that means we're gonna move the rest to the right. If you're getting knock right, you would move the rest to the left. Again, that is regardless of left or right-handed shooters. Some confusion exists for left-handed shooters thinking that you have to do the opposite and the reason for that is, is some bow tuning charts, instead of referencing a global direction of left or right, some tuning charts have referenced a direction from, from the riser. So you can see for a, for a right-handed shooter, you've got a knock left tear. So knock left tells us that we need to move his rest to the right. So that's to the inside of the, uh, that's moving the rest closer to the riser but for a left-handed shooter the the riser is on the opposite side so if you're getting a knock left tear as a left-handed shooter and you move your rest right to fix it that's moving out and away from the riser so that's where the confusion began is these people making these charts with uh move your rest left or move your move your rest away from the riser it's opposite if, if you use the relation of the riser, which is why just don't think of it in, that, in those terms. Think of if you get a left tear, if you get a knock left tear, you move your rest right. If you get a knock right tear, you move your rest left. Don't think about the, the position of the riser. It just, it just confuses the rule. So the last tear we got, uh, Brody's still just a touch. I mean, looking at the paper tear, Brody's like, uh, not even a quarter inch knock left. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna loosen the bolt on the site here on the Epsilon. Uh, so he's knock left. So on the knock left side, we're gonna wanna move, since he turned knock left, we're gonna wanna move the rest uh, to the right. So that would, for him, it would be towards the inside. So. Just looking at the, the cross-reference marks here on the, on the Epsilon, keeping track that I'm 
moving it about as much as we need to. That should be about it. Probably moved it between not quite a, a 32nd of an inch. So when you're when making rest adjustments, less is more. In my mind, I like to make little little adjustments. As I mentioned, this bow came really good from the factory. Uh, Hoyt does a pretty good job of, of, of setting the shims. Uh, the, these, these gray shims or spacers are what I'm referring to the, in between the limb and the cam. So the, these help with the, the cam alignment to left to right, just as you can move the rest from left to right to tune. That's more of a micro fine tune to get your bulk tuning changes. It's uh, uh, the thicknesses of these spacers, Hoyt makes them in, in different thicknesses. Um, uh, so th that, that is your bulk tuning uh, mo uh, method. Uh, with Brody's bow, it came great from the factory, but I'm gonna explain it nonetheless. So the, you can see um, the, the spacers are, are different thicknesses. And uh, if you swap the spacers or even go to a different set of spacers that are even different thicknesses, that'll move the cam left and right. In this particular case, this, this side is the thin spacer and this side is the thicker spacer. Um, Brody had, before we started cutting his arrow down, he had a knock left tear. The rule of thumb, no, the rule is if, if you, if for the rest, if you have a knock left tear, you move your rest to the right. It's the opposite for the cam. If you have a knock left tear, you move your cam to the left, both top or bottom. Moving, how, do, how would you accomplish moving the cam to the left with the spacers? Well, in this case, since the, we would need to move the cam, like I said, to the left, the, the small spacer is on this side and the big spacer is on this side. So we would have to go to a, another set of spacers, the black spacers from Hoyt in order to move the, this cam even more, uh, even more left. Okay, so in the opposite regard, if, we were, if Brody was tearing knock right, the first thing that we would do is um, we could simply just so if he's tearing knock right, we would need to move the cam right to, to fix that. The first thing that we would do if he was tearing knock right would be simply to swap these spacers with the, the small spacer being over here and the big spacer being over here. If we were to take the big spacer and put it over here and small spacer and put it over here, then we'd effectively be moving his cam right. Um, in, the case, in this case where Brody's getting a knock left tear, the big spacer is already on this, this, uh, this right side, so we can't move the cam any more left with this set of spacers. We'll have to go to the black set of spacers. The same thing can be done on the, the, same thing can be done on the bottom. Uh, it's the same set of spacers on the bottom. On the bottom, uh, the big spacer is on the right and the little spacer is on the left, so we would have to go we would have to, again, get a different set of spacers, the black set of spacers. Um, the big black is bigger than the big gray, and the, the little black is smaller than the little gray, so there's more difference between them. So we put the big black on the, left, on the right side and the little black on the left side to, to push the cam even further uh, left. So how the spacers work um, with kind of the cam lean of the bow is kind of in conjunction with the roller guard. Um, so since the roller guard is pulling, kind of pulling both cams in towards the riser, since the, since the distance between the roller guard and the top cam is, is shorter, that means there's more force there. So if you make a change to spacers on the top cam, it's a bigger change than making the change to the bottom cam. So if you need to swap spacers, um, and you could do it on the top or the bottom, the bottom is going to influence the paper tear less 
Um, so if you're looking for a, a, a small degree of change, I focus on, on shimming the bottom cam or s changing the spacers on the bottom cam. If you, if you want a bigger change, then do the top cam. Again, that's because the top cam is closer to the roller guard. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, uh, Brody's bow came, uh, the spacing of the cams with the spacers came great from the factory. Uh, so we, we didn't need to, um, to adjust the alignment of the cams. Uh, his little bit of knock left hair that we have right now, um, it's just tiny, so we're gonna get rid of that and the rest. But if you had to, um, uh, we're kind of just going to go over my process for uh, swapping these spacers. Uh, I really love the the last chance. Uh, I just have the Ease Green press. This is my personal press. Um, I've used it for I don't know, it's probably six years old. It works great. Um, it's one of the cheaper cheaper models. Um, works great for a DIY guy like myself. The biggest thing with with um, pressing any bow with spacers, you have to pull the axle to swap the spacers. Um, what I really, really like about the Last Chance Press is the adjustable fingers that they have um, with these thumb dials, if you will. So you can adjust the tension of, of these fingers. You, you basically want the same amount of tension across all four limbs, so it's really easy to pull the axle. So you'll bas we'll basically adjust the, the left, the, each one of these with the bow slightly pressed in the bow with the, the bow slightly pressed in the press, adjust these so they're about the same tension and then proceed to press the, uh, then proceed to press the bow. Uh, in this particular case, we're ready to pull the axle. Um, so I popped off, uh, preemptively, I popped off the, the little E-clip. And now, uh, so we pulled the E-clip, we're ready to remove the axle to swap the spacers around. Uh, the little tool here, this little uh, rod to help push the, the axle out. The axle comes out. One thing that I like to do to kind of keep things aligned is, is uh, have a, an Allen to, to kind of hold things as I pull that axle. Swap the spacers here. In this case, since Brody's bow didn't require a spacer swap, I'll just kind of demonstrate it. If we were going to uh, change the alignment of, of this particular cam, uh, we'd have to swap to the black spacers. So I'd get those aligned in the cam, um, like so, kind of pull one out, use the Allen wrench to pull one out, and I'd use the spacer tool, kind of get that, get it out, replace it with the other one. Same with this side, as I put it in, uh, the spacer tool is good for grabbing the grabbing the spacer so it kind of gives you a little edge to work on. Line it back up. Getting the spacer in so the shims are in. Ready to replace the axle. Making sure everything's lined up. Once we get that, once we get the axle lined up, uh, then the next thing is just getting that axle through the cam, uh, through that opposite side spacer, and then uh, and then through the that opposite side um, that opposite side limb. If you do a really good job of aligning your uh, your fingers, like I showed previously, uh, that's a pretty smooth transition um, to punch into that opposite side uh, limb. Then replace the E-clip. Typically with an E-clip, just as easy to use a flat edge screwdriver to pop it back on. So now, um, we didn't necessarily have to do it, but I showed you that my process for kind of uh, uh, swap, swapping the spacers. Um, again, if you want to, uh, if you need to, if you're getting a knock left tear, you need to move your cam to the left. If you're getting a knock right tear, you need to move your cam to the right. Um, typically, if you make an adjustment to the, the uh, adjustments to the, the top cam um, for left and right are bigger than adjustments to the bottom cam because of the, the tension on the roller guard. Two for two. 
Okay, so uh, we just made, we got a new piece of paper. Brody shot a few shots. Uh, we were consistently tearing a little bit knock, still, still tearing a little bit knock left. So we moved his rest just a little bit right. Um, we got two uh, perfect bullet holes. Okay, so now that uh, we're finished with uh, the tune, we're gonna get the teep, uh, the peep put in. Uh, we're gonna do uh, just a preliminary tie so that we can go out to the range and get an idea of where where he's landing at 60 yards. Okay, so we're getting ready to go out to the range. Um, uh, we got his peep, we got his peep in, as opposed to tying it in just based off of kind of like an indoor point blank range. Personally, I like to run, uh, I like the peep to be perfectly aligned with your sight housing at like 60 yards, 60 to 80 yards. Um, if you if you have your peep perfectly aligned for you at 20 yards and then you go out and shoot and practice out to 100, 120. You really have to start reaching and adjusting your, your anchor point in order to shoot at 120 yards. So I, I, I pick a, a happier medium, 60 to 80 yards, um, to align my peep perfectly with my sight. So in order to do that, uh, we're gonna do a quick temporary tie-in on his peep so it just doesn't go flying, but uh, that still allows us to move the peep as we need um, to get it perfectly aligned at 60 yards. So to do that, I like uh, BCY uh, 3D material. Um, I'll cut out like a two foot section and show you how I do a temporary tie-in. So kind of come up, I'll do two overhand knots, one, I'm going to rotate that to the bottom so those overhand knots are on the bottom. Pull that, just pull that, those overhand knots tight on the bottom. I'm going to come back up. I'm going to finish it off with a square knot. So left over right. Cinch that knot down and then right over left. Cinch both, both of those down. That's all you need in there for a temporary tie-in to make sure it doesn't go flying. Grab our razor blade. Hopefully I don't accidentally cut Brody's new brand new strings. Ha ha ha. And then we'll get the lighter. Most important thing with uh, when you start uh, burning tag ends is just making sure that your the flame is always going to go up so that you don't want any of the string material on the high side. Um, generally I'll I'd rather burn my fingers than I would the bowstring at this point. So I'll kind of use my thumb there to cover the bowstring. Burn that down, tap it down. Similarly here. Tap that down. We're good to go. So this, that temporary tie-in still, still allows us to, to move the peep up and down as we need so that we can adjust it in the field. And we're good to go to figure out where his peep needs to be exactly for a tie-in at 60. So it's perfectly aligned at 60 yards. Okay, so uh, we're out here at 60 yards. This is where Brody usually shoots outside. Um, wonderful Arizona. Well, there's been horrible in Salt Lake, so it's good to be down here in the warm. So we're just gonna make sure that we want his peep, uh, peep alignment to the center of his, uh, to his housing uh, to, be, to be good at 60 yards instead of 20. I really encourage that so you're not really, really reaching when you take those 100 yard practice shots. Um, if you have your peep perfectly aligned at 60, 
Uh, you may be a little scrunched at 20, but I'd rather be scrunched at 20 than really reaching it, you know, 80 yards or 100 yards. So I find 60 yards a great place to, to align the peep for tying. So we're just going to make sure that's coming back good. We did, uh, we'll look at left and right quick uh, as well and uh, get a, a 60 yard mark so we know where to tie in. How's that? How's that peep look? That peep feels good. Height wise, is fine. Mm -hmm. Your center bone. You're impacting about four inches to the left, so we're gonna bring. He's moving the sight to adjust to bring the sight to the left. Bringing the sight to the left forces you to aim. Uh, forces you to move the bow to the right, and that's why that that's why it corrects the the miss to the left. Okay, so we're we're up about we're left and right's actually pretty good. We're a touch right. Um, you're impacting high, so we need to move. Uh, you're impacting about that top dot, so we need to bring your sight. Um, since you're impacting high, we need to bring your sight up. So, good rule of thumb is to when you're sighting in, to chase the arrow. So if you're you're hitting high, uh, if you're hitting high above your intended point of impact, you need to move your sight up. If you're hitting low, you need to move your sight down. If you're hitting left or right, you need to move your sight. If you're hitting left, you need to move your sight or your pin left. If you're hitting right, you need to move your sight right. So he's hitting high and a little right. So we moved his rest, his sight up and we can move his sight just a touch, move your sight just a touch to the right. Good thing with the, the fast eddy, as you can see, uh, it's tool, toolless adjustment. So he's, un, he's unlocking the lever there and then spinning the dial to move his sight right. Just, it was just a touch, maybe just an inch and a half, two inches at 60, so not many clicks. And then. Okay, so we got the, the peep lined up for him at 60. Um, we're gonna, while, while we're out here, we're gonna just double check the tune and talk about uh, shooting bear shafts at distance. So we're gonna walk up here starting at uh, uh, probably, we'll probably start at 10 or 15 yards. He's gonna shoot a fletched arrow and a bear shaft arrow at the same point, And we're gonna see how the bear shaft uh, lands different than the, than the fletched arrow and see if we can uh, tune his rest accordingly to get the two to land, uh, land the same. Mine that. But honestly, like when the shot broke, that's exactly where it was. It's not so crazy. No, it's 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 not too bad for not too bear shaft not too bad for bear shaft at uh, at twenty yards. Um, so you can tell so the 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 point versus uh, the knock. So the, the, the knock is, is left of the point. So it's, a, it's tearing a touch knock left and uh, a touch knock high. Little knock to the left and a little knock high. So as we learned, as we were paper, as we were paper shooting, to correct this, we'd move the knocking point down just a little bit, not too much, and then since we are a little bit uh, knock left, we would move the rest a little bit to the right. Okay, so we just made a uh, small rest adjustment. Well, I, I lowered, since we were knock high and a little knock left, I lowered the knocking point and then we moved his rest, the, again, the opposite. 
uh, since he's, since we're a little knock left, uh, we moved his uh, rest to the right, just a little bit. Okay, so we've started, um, uh, we kept going back and forth a couple times, just trying to fine tune that tune. Um, here's what we're looking for. Uh, the bear shaft and the fletched, uh, kind of having the same angle into the target and also hitting pretty much the same point of impact at 20 yards. Um, so that's showing us that the tune is, is, is pretty good. Uh, like, like we were showing before, we were a little knock high and a little knock left. So we corrected that and the bear shaft's looking good. So last thing I want to verify just real quick in the tune is that a fixed blade broadhead is hitting uh, where it's supposed to, where he's aiming. So we're gonna, we're gonna screw the fill tip off. This is a, an Iron Will S100. It's a great, great broadhead and sounds like Brody's gonna carry, or, carry one or two of these in his quiver um, in case there's a, a shot that uh, he'd prefer to take with a fixed blade. So we'll see where this impacts. I imagine now that we've, we've bear shaft tuned that it's gonna impact dead center because typically it's harder to shoot bear shafts than it is fixed blades. Same goes for fixed blades as bear shafts um, in terms of uh, um, fi fixing, uh, fixing a, a tune problem. Okay, so fix, fixed blade 20 yards pretty much was hitting right where the bear shaft and the, and the, um, the fill tip or the fletched fill tip hit as well. So that's pretty much the, the Bose tuned. Um, now, uh, like I said, we'll go back to the shop, uh, get his peep tied in, cut the D-loop out and tie in knock set points. So that, that, that knocking point we've now confirmed is good. Uh, so we're gonna tie in the knock set so that never moves, and if he ever wears out his D-loop, um, uh, those knock sets will remain permanent, so you can replace your D-loop without worrying about it changing anything. Um, so we'll go and do that now.